Pearson. Emmanuel Wiley Pearson. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? I can't see you here. I can't see you, but. Hello. Put yourself on the video and in what case are you here at? What case are you here at? Sorry, sir. What case are you here on? Uh, the one on Ziegler Street. What's the case number? Uh Case number is, I mean, one second. You have it, you do. Right up. Yeah. Case number is 22-02-0259. Uh, hang on one second, you're not on my docket today, so hang on. Just call my name, sir. What's that? You just call my name, your honor. I did because it's, it's written on the on the Zoom name. Uh, it's not on my docket sheet though. Case number two two zero two zero two five nine. Yes, sir. Wayne County Landman. Ah, versus all occupants. Okay. So you live on Ziegler Street? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So, today's the date and time set for a pretrial. Attorney Brooks. Your Honor, may I make any statements regarding any matters in this case? First off, put yourself on the video because this is a video conference. I'm not going to talk to your hair. Oh, I apologize. This is going so slow. I was. Yeah. I said, am I able to make? Am I able to make any statements regarding any matters in this case? Are you going to be able to make statements? I mean, in today's today's uh, hearing right now, can I make some statements? Today is just a pretrial. Today is just an opportunity for you to meet with the other side discuss the matter, and then, then next week is the hearing. So, so there's really no statements being made today. Today is just a pretrial. So I'm gonna put Who you is, and Ms. Brooks, I'm gonna put you and Ms. Brooks into a uh, breakout room two. Okay, thank you. Ms. Brooks, you had the opportunity to uh, speak with Mr. Pearson. I did, and Your Mr. Honor. Mr. Pearson, uh, with, with the phone, are you recording this right now? No, I'm I'm trying to make sure you can see my face. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. I can see you. Okay. That's fine. Okay, okay, yes. So what, what what is your what is your name for the record? Just so I make sure I have it correct. Okay, my name is Emmanuel Quentin Wiley Pearson L. Okay, so hang on. Emmanuel, I'm gonna write this down. Emmanuel Pearson Wiley. No, uh, middle name is Quentin. Last name is gonna be Wiley Pearson ill. Oh, okay, okay. Hyphenated or no on the Wiley Pearson? No, no hyphenated. All right. And um, I'm going to have to ask you to, if you could, um, the middle name, could you spell that for me? Yes, Q U E N T I N. Okay. And then L, is there, an, is there a comma after the Pearson and then the L or a hyphen no. and an L or just L? No, sir, just L, E L. Okay. Sure. All right. And you are currently residing at Taylor. Yes, but I have uh, additional properties. I'm I might not be there every night, but that is one of my houses. Yeah. The gas is on, electricity is on, in my name. Okay. My neighbors right, well, harass this is a, me. This is, a, this, sure. this is a termination of tenancy. Um, so the the um, alleged rightful owner is asking that you vacate the premises. And we're set to have a hearing on March the 1st at 1.15. Did you guys work anything out or we're just gonna come to hearing on March, they on know, March 1st? What I, 
they no longer have a lien. They, I removed their lien in the district court. I have a federal open case case number. She tried to read me a case number that was already closed. Then she had an action that pertained nothing to the defendant that it was listed was with an old defendant in which we made errors. All there right, was so no errors. So, hold on, hold on, Mr. Uh, Mr. Do you prefer Mr. Pearson, Mr. L? I just want to. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. Here. Yes, it doesn't matter. Okay, so Mr. Pearson, today's not the hearing. Nobody's under oath. Today's just a okay. pretrial. I'm just, okay. I'm just saying. Uh, so, Ms. Brooks, are you prepared to go to a hearing on the first? Yes, Your Honor. Do the parties need uh, any time to file any motions or briefs uh, yes. for motions? Yes, absolutely. So, are even you though I'm filing a notice, of, Your Honor. Yeah. I'm filing a notice of claim, um, removal of, from the state court in the district court that it's already in, a foreign oh, arbitral no, award. State, first off, hang on. First off, I have, I have original jurisdiction over any of the landlord tenant type stuff. Second, I have not received an order from any federal court uh, vacating my authority and, and removing this to the federal level. So until yeah, I, because do, you I, I still have jurisdiction. So, no, I understand. That was because you have never received anything. Okay. You've never received so, anything. Sure. So we have it set for March 1st. I'll see everybody on March 1st, 1.15. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, All Your right. Honor. And then um, do we need to do this? Um, I, I don't, I'm assuming that there's going to be documentation. Yes. Okay, then let's do this in person. Please. Here at the courthouse. Oh, okay. wait, I'm out of town. Well, it's March 1st, so I'm having it here March 1st. So that's when, that's when we're having the hearing. I, How just, do I put it? I'm, hard, I'm doing... It's too hard to do it by Zoom when there's a bunch of documents to look at. So if people have documents to look at, I want to make sure everybody can see them. I want to be able to see them. So we're going to set this. It's already set for March 1st. I'm just saying that it's going to be uh, in person here at the courthouse. So I'll see everybody I can do here at 115 on March 1st. I can do it in chambers by special appearance. I can do it in chambers by special appearance. Um, say again? I can do it in chambers by special appearance. Okay, you're going to show up here at the court on March 1st. All right. Yes, through the mail. All right, I'll see you, I'll see you here uh, on March 1st in person, everybody. Thank right, you. Thank you. Everybody out there on YouTube land and everybody here at the 23rd watching of the Mr. Gate have us mark. Numbers 31 and 32, People versus Taft Lewis, 16432 FH. Well, this was adjourned from last week. Um, so here we are. So here we are. Do you have the opportunity to speak to Mr. Lewis? Um, not really directly to Mr. Lewis. We did uh, mention to Mr. Judge Conlin that um, I was thinking, based on the fact that he's been struggling financially, if the court would be willing to waive the waivable fees, that would leave him a $73 mandatory balance. We never really got that far. So. Okay. All right. I see there's a range of range for it. Said seven, he'll owe 73. Yes, that's correct. What's the amount of the waivable? He owes 2004 $2,045.80 of that total, $73 is mandatory. Okay. And he's paid $125 so far. Mr. Attorney General, what do you have to say? Uh, well, I, I guess I'm not uh, entirely clear on the um, basis of the violation. I don't have, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I've received documents regarding that. Um, with respect to the underlying uh, child support case, uh, Mr. Lewis currently owes $21,415.70, and he has a, a current obligation of $66 a month, a 6-6. Six, six. Um, and uh, his last payment was in August of 2022. Um, I, I, I also am not sure if Mr. Lewis has any uh, representation in this matter or not. No, I'll be representing myself. Oh, okay. I have PD written down here, but I did try to yes. see, see him this morning, Your Honor, but he said he's representing himself. So. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So I sorry, I thought Mr. Gaddy was here on this. Sorry. Yes, two issues. Okay. The collections issue and then the probation violation issue. Okay. So as to the collection issue, I can waive the waivable 
amounts. <laughs> and Mr. Petherbridge, if you submit an order for that, leave will do, Your Honor. Balance at 73, you said? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And Mr. Lewis. Can I speak now, Your Honor? Yep, just a minute. No problem. Okay, Mr. Lewis, pursuant to Court Rule 6005, you have the right to the assistance of an attorney. So I can read you this section here if you're interested in no, ma no, ma representing yourself. Yes, I am. Ma you are interested in representing yourself. Yes, okay. I've been representing well, myself since 2010, ma'am. Okay. Well, so then you've probably heard this a time or two, but we're supposed to read it to you every single time you come to court. No problem. Okay. Um, so hold on just one second. It says here under subsection D, court may, and this is in the initial waiver, so I'm assuming some other judge did this for you, but if not, here it goes. You are being advised that of the charge that you have in front of you, the violation of probation for which um, you have a VOP that is pending, alleges that you violated condition number three about making a truthful report to your probation officer monthly, um, as that they required and that a failed, you failed to report on 126.23 and that you, on 127.23, uh, a call was placed to you and contact was made, said you were going to turn yourself in on the warrant. Um, the potential penalty in this case is up to five years and or $5,000. And I will read this verbatim. Advising the defendant of the charge, the maximum possible prison sentence for the offense, any mandatory minimum required by law, and the risk involving self-representation. In addition to that, I will offer you the opportunity to consult with a lawyer that you can retain of your choosing. Um, currently, you're in custody, so I'd also appoint the public defender's office if you wanted assistance. That's my understanding that you are not interested. No assistance needed, Your Honor. Okay. This is your choice. All right. So how do we how are we proceeding with the violation of probation? Your Honor, I don't respect the reason I'm here today, but I will not disrespect your court because of others' egregious actions towards me. Uh, this is our first time meeting, and I plan on it being our last. Before right. Mr. Crickenbridge left, I would have liked to uh, address the whole panel um, so that uh, I had just a few questions for him to set precedent so that everyone's stance could be evident and clear and no misinterpretations. But I see Mr. Crickenbridge tuck tail and ran. Well, we're making a recording and he's still here. He just was out of the camera view. Great, great. Uh, Mr. Preckenbridge, can you please uh, state your full name and title for the record? No, uh, Mr. No, Mr. Lewis, this is not your hearing. I can't uh, address the panel. And there's no panel. Uh, you have the probation officer, you have the court uh, fines and fee officer, and you have the assistant. And everyone put their appearances on the record. So okay. we're going to move it along. No problem. I can get right to it. That is fine. All right. Um, the law is my protection and I shall find remedy in it. Before we begin this process, I would like to address the court. In addressing the court, I would like to fully read and completely express all information today without interruption. I have two questions for the court. First question is, are all laws commercial? Second question. Oh, I Mr. Have, Lewis. Mr. Lewis. Yes, ma'am. You have, we have a violation of probation in front of you. I understand that you have been arraigned on the violation of probation. And because you are decided that you want to act as your own counsel, I will hold you to the same standards as I would any other defense counsel in this same procedure and within the same case. So as to the violation of probation, you can accept responsibility by pleading guilty to the violation or no contest. You can set this matter for a hearing in which we go forward, but this is not your hearing to run. Do you understand? 
Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to address the court and put on record um, some very variable value information. Um, and by asking me questions is not putting information that you have on the record. Yes, ma'am. Um, I won't ask any more questions. Can I finish my statement? I have no more questions. My question for you is how are we proceeding with the hearing today? Are we proceeding with an acceptance or are we proceeding that we need to set this matter for hearing? Um, Ma'am, this is uh, not even a hearing that we should be having. Um, if I could finish my statement, um, you could see that um, unless the AG has certain information, this is totally in violation and I'm not able to express myself. Like I said, I have no more questions. I just would like to read the information I have and then they can go and go which direction they want to after the information has been expressed, ma'am. Okay, tell me if you feel like the petition for your violation oh, yeah. of probation is wanton in some regard. It, it is not wanted at all, Your Honor. I shouldn't be. It's on not wanton. I shouldn't be. So on you believe that it's accurate? Uh, no, I believe it's inner. I believe me being on probation is okay. Inner. Quickly, Mr. Taft Lewis. I, I can finish. Thank you. Um, I am the de jure, I am not an imbecile in law. I do not surrender my inalienable rights for any civil liberties. I am a five-fifths five -fifths realized being and not a three-fifths dress got compromised imbecile in law. I'm here today for, what, for the non-payment of what is commonly known as child support. For the record, there's no such thing as child support. The real reason I'm here today is because you're trying to enforce a contract slash agreement by forcing me or compelling me to be a surety for Mr. Lewis, are you telling me that you're a sovereign citizen and you do not believe that the orders of the court apply to you? Ma'am, no, ma'am, I'm not sovereign at all. I'm just speaking, I'm just expressing why. That's I'm what here. you just said. I said I'm a five fifths realized being, ma'am. Okay. That's not, yes, that's not. So these are, I need you, if you can't answer my question, we're going to adjourn this until you can get a hearing and I'm going to appoint standby counsel of the public defender. I, I don't want Thank counsel, you. ma'am. I just want to finish. I understand that. So what I want you to do, and you don't have to have Mr. Gaddy right next to you during your event, but your hearing for next week. But what I want you to do is talk to him about your available option, because what's very clear to me is that you're not listening to the questions that are being posed to the court. But I say, are we having a hearing or are you accepting your responsibility? I need an answer to that before we can go forward. You making a statement is an evidence. That's not evidence, Mr. Lewis. And because you want to represent yourself, you're going to be held to the same standard as if you were a defense attorney appearing in front of this court. You can change your mind about that and have Mr. Gaddy represent you. No, I don't want to. But in the meantime, you. I'd like for you to talk to him in the next week so that you guys can discuss what the proper way is to go about dealing with the court. Because as of right now, you're not following the proper criminal procedure. You don't get to just make statements. There's an order to things. So you can find that out for Mr. Gaddy. This case is adjourned until I'm next week. We'll see you back on the 6th. Or I'm trying to give you enough time where you need to put it up to me. Be released. Oh, sorry. Mr. Attorney General, does that give you enough time to do a writ or do you need more time than that? Judge, uh, our office will request two weeks uh, just to ensure we have time. We'll put it up two weeks. Am I being remanded to jail, ma'am, or am I free to be released and come back in? Because I came in on my own accords, ma'am. I have no problem with coming back. Whatever day. I'd like to make a bond motion, I'll hear that. Yes, I would. First, I'll put the, uh, the recommendation from probation on the record. Thank you. The recommendation is for Mr. Lewis to serve four days in jail with four days credit. Um, and to report to Agent Priest and report to probation on March 2nd in the office. Your Honor, I'd also like to make note that I have a note here that indicates. Your Honor, may we approach? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you, um, we need to have a private conversation because we have um, Mr. Attorney General is not here in person. Um, we have to clear the courtroom. Separate that. Prosecutors. Okay, Mr. Taft Lewis, um, 
got additional information. You know, if you wanted to see me, there's a different way to do that. If you have a motion or part of that is by working with an attorney who knows how to navigate the procedures of the court. Again, your choice not to use an attorney. I still have the standby counsel for the public defender. Should you choose to avail yourself of their decades of legal knowledge that might help you navigate this process? Ma'am, I thought um, this was I, the hearing. I, I didn't know. It pardon? Was. I thought this was the hearing because last week I could not speak also because he said it was uh, your case and I would be able to have my turn to speak when I was in front of you. Now I'm in front of you and you're telling me this isn't the hearing also. So I didn't know how you guys were going to proceed. I just want to be uh, heard on what information I have. Um, like I said before, um, I asked for this warrant so that I could get in front of you so that I could say this information to see which way. And Mr. Taft Lewis, that's exactly what I'm saying is that you had used the assistance of the public defender's office or your attorney who assisted you at the time of your case, you wouldn't have had to violate your probation to get in front of this court. I don't believe that you are a flight risk. I think you just made poor decisions. So I am going to release you, but you are to respond here in person, which is March 6th. No problem. On Monday at 1.30, and that is the date and time set for your hearing. Yes, ma'am. At that be. time, I would expect you to follow the proper procedure that any other criminal defense attorney would be held to the same standard. You You're still right. have the public yeah. defender at your disposal if you choose to consult with them. No problem. Could you also yes, order him to report in person yes. probation office? You'll have to report to probation tomorrow. I'm sorry, March 2nd? Yes. You'll report to probation on March 2nd to meet with your agents. Uh, which agent is that? Is that Agent Moses, Agent Miller, or Agent Priest? Agent Priest. No problem. Uh, Your Honor, if I might, if I could ask Mr. Lewis to contact my office and give us the uh, you know, address and phone number. Did you hear that, Mr. Lewis? The public yes, defender is availing themselves to you. I have no comment on that, but yes, I did hear him, ma'am. Uh, I'm releasing you on PR. Much appreciated, ma'am. Okay, we will see you all, back here. That on all warrants, I had three warrants. One from the court fees and fines. I had one from FOC <laughs> and one from the violation of probation. Is that all warrants? I'll be released on PR? Yes. And yes. Much appreciated, ma'am. I will see you March 6th. See you then. It's 1 30 p.m. On March 6th. March 6th. Yes, March 6th. Okay. All right. Number 33, People versus Hillary Marshall, 22 321 FH. 